you hear what I said? I said that I found another man's things in the living room. This is the third time this month. What's going on here? So what? It's my life. I can do what I want. You think bringing random men home is okay? This isn't just about you anymore. I also know that you're pregnant. Don't act like you care. You never understood me. I care about you, Elena. But this, this reckless behavior has to stop. What do you want me to do? Sit around and wait for you to approve of my life? I want you to take responsibility. This isn't just a game. You can't keep running from your problems. Maybe I don't want to face them. I'm tired of your lectures. I can't have an unwed mother living in my house. I will leave then if that's what you want. Then where will you go? This isn't a way to live. I don't know. Arello, pointing toward the door. You need to figure it out, because I can't have this in my home anymore. You need to leave. You're kicking me out. I can't watch you destroy yourself. You need to find a way to get help, Elena. But I have nowhere to go. You can go to your grandmother's. Floor's house. Elena arrives, tears streaming down her face as she knocks on the door. Ines opens it, looking concerned. Elena, what happened? I, I messed up, Grandma. Shush, it's okay, come inside. You need to talk about this. What did your father say? He kicked me out, he said I was ruining my life, and maybe he's right. You're still my sweet girl, but you need to find a better path. I don't even know where to start. I've been looking for my mom. Sabrina, she's been overseas for some time now. She initially went there for therapy and successfully overcame her chronic depression. During her time there, she found love and decided to stay. Over the years, she's tried to reach out to both you and your brothers, but your father, Aurelo, refused to let her back into your lives, fearing she might have a negative impact on you. What you probably didn't know is that most of the gifts I've given you and your brothers over the years were actually from her. I just pretended I bought them so your father wouldn't throw them away. Have you thought about reaching out to her? I think I need to. I want to be with her. Aurelo's house, cluttered with boxes and Elena's belongings. Elena enters with a bag, looking uneasy. Aurelo is sitting at the dining table, his expression stern. You're back. I thought you were going to your grandmother's. I just came to get the rest of my things. Fine, but we need to talk about this. What's there to talk about? I messed up. Okay. You're pregnant. Elena, who's the father? Elena, answer me. I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I've been involved with several guys, and honestly, it could be any one of them. It all began when I started university. I was so depressed that I started seeking out men to numb the pain. Every day, I'd see some of my former high school classmates going off to medical school while I was stuck in ethnic studies classes I hated. I'm still embarrassed to admit what I studied. Maybe ethnic studies is a great degree for some, but for me, as someone who was a straight, a, science student, it felt like a failure. Dad, I know I've made mistakes, and I'm really struggling to break free from these bad habits. This is not a game, Elena. You need to take responsibility. Responsibility? I didn't ask to be in this situation. Then you need to figure it out. I can't have this in my house. Elena, grabbing a box. I get it. I'm leaving. Aurelo watches her, disappointment etched on his face as he storms out. Scene shifts to a small apartment belonging to one of Elena's boyfriends. Elena is sitting on the couch, scrolling through her phone. You okay? You seem distant. Just thinking about everything that's happened. Look, you can stay here as long as you need. I appreciate it, but I'm thinking I might need to leave the country, go to my mom. Your mom, is she even in a position to help you? She is. She's moved overseas. I just need the money for the trip. 
My grandmother gave me some money and I just need to top it up. I need the amount I mentioned earlier. Boyfriend, pulling out cash. Here, take this. Just promise me you'll be careful. Thank you. I really mean it. Floor's house. Sophia and Adriana are gossiping in the living room, sharing a malicious smirk. Did you hear about Elena? I heard she's kicked out again. <laughs> it's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. <laughs> And now she can't even tell who the father is. How pathetic is that? At least Ava and Jimena know who their baby daddies are. It's just too easy to poke fun at her now. And let's not forget Aurelo's failed marriage. We played our parts well. Exactly. Now when people talk about your kids' problems, we can remind them of Alina's disaster. It's all so perfect. I just can't believe how everything turned out. This is just the beginning. We'll have our fun watching them all fall apart. My next targets are our other brother's eldest sons, that is, Bastian and Isandro's prized children. They're beloved boys. What? Sophia, aren't you taking this too far? Elena, now packing her things at her boyfriend's apartment. She glances at her phone, looking at pictures of her mother, contemplating her future. Maybe I can start over. She takes a deep breath feeling a mixture of hope and despair. Lord, please help me. Ava's counseling office. Ava sits across from Mrs. Rodriguez, an elderly woman in her late 60s, visibly 10. The room is cozy, with soft lighting and gentle Christian instrumental music playing in the background. Mrs. Rodriguez's eyes are red from crying, and she's clutching a tissue. It's a vulnerable moment. The first time she's opening up about her father abandoning her as a child. I just don't get it, Ava. How could he leave? He never came back. Not a phone call. Not even a letter. Nothing. It's like I wasn't worth staying for. Like I didn't matter. Mrs. Rodriguez, I hear you. What you're feeling is so valid. The pain of abandonment, especially from a parent, can cut deep. It can leave wounds that feel impossible to heal. But I want you to know something important right now. You matter. You've always mattered. Your worth isn't tied to what he did or didn't do. But it feels like it is. Every relationship I've had since he left, I'm constantly afraid they'll leave too. Like I'm never good enough for anyone to stay. Even God. I keep asking, why would he let this happen to me? I understand how you feel, Mrs. Rodriguez. I felt that same fear, that same anger at God. When my father left, I questioned my own worth, and I questioned him too. But I want to challenge you with something. What if, what if God didn't cause this pain, but he can use it to reveal something deeper? To show you how he sees you. I don't see it, Ava. I don't see anything good in this. I didn't either, for a long time. But Mrs. Rodriguez, our earthly fathers are flawed, imperfect. Some, like mine and yours, made decisions that hurt us deeply. But our Heavenly Father, he's not like that. He's constant, faithful, and his love is unconditional. He hasn't left you, even though it feels like it. And right now, in this moment, he wants to show you a love that doesn't abandon. It's okay to grieve what you've lost. It's okay to feel the anger and the pain. But I want you to start seeing yourself the way God does, not as someone who was abandoned, but as someone who was chosen by him, someone he's never let go of. Can you try to believe that, even just a little bit? How? How do I even start? One step at a time. It starts with forgiveness, not for your father's sake, but for yours. Forgiving him releases you from the prison of anger and bitterness. But I know it's hard. So, we'll do this together. Let's start by praying, asking God to give you the strength to even consider forgiveness. You don't have to do it alone. Mrs. Rodriguez hesitates, then nods, her hands trembling. Ava reaches out, holding her hands, her voice calm yet powerful. 
Let us pray. Mrs. Rodriguez hesitates, then nods, her hands trembling. Ava reaches out, holding her hands, her voice calm yet powerful. Father God, we come before you in this moment of deep pain and confusion. Mrs. Rodriguez is hurting, Lord, and she's been carrying this burden for so long. I ask that you reveal to her the depth of your love, the love of a father who never leaves, never forsakes, and never abandons. Help her, Lord, to release the anger and the pain, to walk in forgiveness, and to see herself as your beloved daughter. Give her the strength to heal, Father. We know you are with her every step of the way. In Jesus' name, Amen. Mrs. Rodriguez squeezes Ava's hand, crying softly but with a glimmer of hope now visible in her eyes. Amen. This is the beginning, Mrs. Rodriguez. You don't have to be defined by your father's absence anymore. You are loved, cherished, and worthy, because God says so. We'll work through this together, okay? Okay. I think I'm ready. Sabrina's house overseas. Elena, you're here. Mom, I've missed you. I've missed you too, sweetheart. You look troubled. What's going on? I made so many mistakes, Mom. I'm pregnant, and I don't know what to do. We can figure this out together. I've learned a lot about coping since I recovered. I can help you. You really think so? Absolutely. I practice mindfulness, pray, meditate on scripture daily, and exercise to keep my mind clear. We'll work on this as a family. I want to be better. And you will be. You have the strength to change your path. Let's start today. With the Lord's help, you will become all that he predestined you to be. Amen. Flora's living room, where Bastion and Isandro's sons, Leo and Marco, sit on the couch, looking restless. Sophia sits next to the boys, her demeanor persuasive. Boys, I've been hearing about your struggles, your money problems, your friends. You know there's a way to fix all of that. What do you mean, Aunt Sophia? Thank you for watching this episode of The Price of Pride. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest content. We'd also appreciate it if you could like and share our videos. We value your support. As this episode draws to a close, we are reminded of the deep and lasting wounds that life's hardships can leave behind. Mrs. Rodriguez's story is one of many who carry the scars of abandonment for decades, seeking validation in places that could never fill the void. Yet, through her tears and brokenness, a seed of hope begins to take root. Ava, with her gentle spirit, reminds us that no matter how deep the pain, God's love can reach deeper. Forgiveness isn't about justifying the wrongs done to us, but about releasing the chains of bitterness that hold us captive. As Ava said, healing doesn't come overnight, but it begins with one small step, a decision to trust in the unfailing love of our Heavenly Father, who will never abandon or forsake us. In contrast, Elena's journey shows us the consequences of searching for comfort and identity in the wrong places. The brokenness that has followed her is a reflection of trying to numb her pain through fleeting pleasures. But even in her lowest moments, there is hope. Through her reunion with her mother, Sabrina, we see that redemption is always within reach. God's grace is powerful enough to rewrite any story, no matter how lost or confused we may feel. And as for Sophia and Adriana's gossip, it serves as a sobering reminder that malicious joy at another's suffering only distances us from God's heart. Rather than delighting in others' downfall, we are called to lift each other up, for in the body of Christ, we are meant to edify and encourage one another. In both of these stories, 
we are reminded of the power of God's redemptive love. It doesn't matter how far we've fallen, how broken we feel, or how many mistakes we've made. His arms are always open, waiting for us to return. And as a community, let us strive to be like Ava, vessels of love, grace, and healing, rather than like Sophia and Adriana, who allow bitterness to harden their hearts. Let us continue to walk in faith, forgive those who have wronged us, and seek healing through Christ, knowing that His plans for us are greater than the pain we've endured. May we all find the strength to take that first step toward healing, and may we trust God to guide us the rest of the way. Let this be the takeaway, we are never too broken for God to heal, nor too lost for Him to find. Keep pressing forward, one step at a time, knowing that with God, all things are possible. Before we conclude this episode, we would like to share the following verses for you to reflect upon. Please note that they are taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. God's unfailing love and faithfulness. Psalm 27, 10 says, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Isaiah 49, 15-16 says, Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Deuteronomy 31, 8 says, And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. Forgiveness and Healing Ephesians 4.32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Psalm 147, 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. Colossians 3.13 says, Forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so I also do ye. Redemption and New Beginnings 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Joel 2.25 says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Isaiah 1.18 says, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Guarding the heart and avoiding bitterness. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Hebrews 12.15 says, Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And Ephesians 4.31 Let all bitterness, and wrath, and anger, and clamor, an evil speaking, be put away from you, with all malice. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging your infinite power and grace. You are the God who sees, the God who heals, and the God who restores. Lord, we thank you for your unwavering love and mercy that renews every morning, no matter how broken or lost we may feel. Father, we ask for deliverance today. Your word says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Luke 4.18 Lord, break every chain of bondage, every ungodly tie, and every generational curse that seeks to hinder the lives of your children. Set us free by the power of the blood of Jesus. We lift up every heart that has been wounded by the past, every spirit crushed by disappointment, and every soul burdened by the weight of sin. You have promised in your word that he healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds, Psalm 147, 3. We ask for your healing touch today. Pour out your healing balm over every scar, both seen and unseen, and make us whole again. Heal us emotionally, physically, and spiritually. 
Lord, we pray for transformation. Your word tells us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, 2 Corinthians 5.17. We surrender every aspect of our lives to you. Renew our minds, purify our hearts, and align our desires with your will. Help us walk in obedience to your word, living lives that reflect your love, truth, and righteousness. We forgive those who have wronged us, as you have commanded us in your word, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you, if a science 432. Free our hearts from bitterness and anger. Teach us to love, even when it's hard, and to see others as you see them. Lord, we trust that you are working all things together for our good. We believe in your promise that I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, Joel 2.25. You are a God of restoration, and we claim that promise over our lives today. Restore relationships, restore peace, restore joy, and restore purpose in the name of Jesus. As we leave this moment of prayer, may your presence go with us. Strengthen us by your spirit, and help us walk in faith knowing that you are faithful to complete the good work you have begun in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.